Today I'll be showing you how to do another set another boundary condition for the uh, edges of the water um, cylinder now and I'm also going to um, teach you a little bit about derived parts um, and so let's go ahead um, in the last video we set the rod boundary conditions as a temperature at 370 uh, Celsius um, I'm sorry 370 Kelvin and now we're going to set some boundary conditions for some of the, the water cylinders. So um, over here on the in the regions menu, I am going to leave. If you look at the in the same place uh, previously for the water sides or the water bottom, um, which the water bottom is that that face and the water sides are around here, and the water top is there. If you look at these, they're all adiabatic right now. Um, thermal specification for the water bottom, water sides, uh, and the water top. They're, they're all adiabatic. However, I'd like to um, apply a boundary condition on the water top. The other two I'm going to leave as adiabatic, but I'd like to apply a boundary condition for the water top, um, which is going to be a temperature, and we are going to set this temperature on the top to be about 320 Kelvin. Now this is going to basically just create some natural circulation between the heated rod here and then the, the let's see there, the heated rod there and then the cooled top up here. It's going to probably create some circular natural um, circulation. So that's basically our region um, that we're done with. There's, there's another thing that's important that, to know how to be able to do, which is if you come down inside the water node, instead of going straight to boundaries, if you go to physical conditions and select energy source option, here we have none, but you could potentially add a volumetric heat source or some sort of other heat exchanger or other heat source. Um, that is uh, actually very applicable when modeling nuclear um, reactors or, or nuclear um, technology because you can set um, there to be a certain amount of energy per per unit volume, kind of like a a fuel rod or some sort some sort of fuel source like that. So, but we won't be doing that in this video. Now, I mentioned derived parts at the start. A derived part is a plane or a line or something that helps you visualize the solution. Visualizing the solution is usually part of post processing, but I sometimes like to build the derived parts. Um, to begin with so I can watch it converge. And so let's go right click on drive part, select new part, and let's go to a section plane. Okay, now you can see it appears in our geometry view, kind of what's going on. Um, the plane is there, and I actually, I like where that is. I'm gonna set it exactly to Z equals 0 0.05 meters. Um, the origin is a good spot, and I like the normal vector here. Um, shows which direction it will be pointing. So if I change that to be 0 and make it 1 in the y direction, then now it's pointing the opposite way. So I'm going to actually leave it like that. Make sure you select no displayer down here. Um, otherwise you can kind of get extra lines and stuff on your on your geometry scene, which kind of gets annoying. So we're going to create this plane here. And once it's been created, um, then you can actually go up here and without exiting out of the menu, you can make a new one. So we're going to make one this direction too. Create that as well. And finally, I'd like to create one, not that slanted direction, but this vertical direction. We'll create that, and then we'll close. And if we scroll down to our derived parts, we now have three planes. You can see there's a little faint purple outline there. Um, there's a plane section there, a plane section there, and a plane section there. Now, the reason these are just outlines and not solid planes yet is because we don't have a mesh, and we'll be getting to that in the next video. Um, but for now, we have these section planes, which are going to help us visualize our solution um, and also kind of uh, set, up the, set up the simulation as well. So that's it. Thanks.